Hello and welcome to Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online virtual worship for July 9th, 2023. Let's pray. Lord, we lift our hands to you in praise and in need because we are always in need of you in particular, Lord. We pray for those who are suffering now, those who are ill, those who are recovering from accidents, those who are suffering from illnesses, those, Lord, who are suffering from the intense heat and have no place to escape. Uh, Lord, I, I've, the, the heat is, is great right now, and many people have no way to avoid it. And I pray that you would protect all those who need it. Lord, I, I pray that you would use us, even as you used your apostles so many years ago, to spread the good news wherever we go, to let people know that you are Lord, that you love us, that you forgive us our sins, and that you give us life. Bless us, Lord, and teach us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Continuing our look in the book of Luke, calling this message, Sent Out to Serve. Um, we took a long time on chapter 8, I know. It was quite a while, but we're going to begin chapter 9 now. And we see Jesus here sending the 12 out to spread the good news. And in the next chapter, chapter 10, we'll see him sending out 72. Uh, no doubt the result of those the 12 going out and bringing back even more. So let's take a look at that. First of all, a reminder that we are under his authority. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It's from Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 2. <clears throat> this is a reminder that the apostles did wondrous, amazing things, but they did not do it under their own authority. They did not drive out demons under their own authority. They did not cure diseases under their own authority. In fact, they didn't even proclaim the kingdom of God under their own authority. It was under the authority given to them by Jesus. And when we do things in the name of Jesus, we are doing it under his authority, not under our own authority. Whether that is teaching or preaching, whether that is ministering, whether that is caring, whatever that is, it's not under our own strength or under our own power that we do it. And we must always remember that because the fact is we're never going to be equal to the task that lies before us. There is always going to be more to do than we are capable of doing. But Jesus authorizes us to do it. He empowers us to do it. He is with us, even if he is not physically with us. And the disciples knew as they went out, that they were going out with the Spirit of Jesus and in his power. And we must remember that. And notice that he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God means the rule of God. It's not talking about a location. Generally, if we talk about a kingdom of so-and-so, we're talking about a location, but that's not what this means. The kingdom of God is the reign or the rule or the, the sovereignty of God and reminding people of that truth. And it is because of that sovereignty, that rule, that power, that authority, that they were healing the sick. Now remember, this is before any words of the New Testament had been penned. Most scholars feel that the, the earliest that any of the New Testament written was still well after Jesus had died and risen and returned to the Father. Um, probably at least 20 years or so would be the earliest of any of the gospel accounts that we have, much less Paul's letters that came much later. And so their, the authority that they rely on is what's shown in healing those who are sick, in driving out those who are demon-possessed. 
Now, he does this by reminding him that they have to rely on the Lord. They must rely on him, not on their own planning, not on their own foresight, not on their, their ideas, but totally relying on the Lord. He told them, take nothing for the journey. No staff, bag, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Now, I will point out that some translations translate this, except a staff. Uh, and it is possible that that is the original Hebrew there, but we do not see the original Hebrew. We see it in Greek, and it's a little unclear. So, um, but despite that, everything else was to be left. They were not to take bread. No bag, which would have meant something you can carry things in. No money, no extra shirt, nothing. Don't take any clothes. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. This is Luke 9, 3 through 5. So they are relied to, on the providence of God. God will open the doors for them wherever they are to go. They're not to take anything with them. So, among other things, they do not present any kind of a target for thieves because uh, they have nothing to take. And when they go to a town and they find a home that would welcome them, and this might sound strange to us in the 21st century, but in fact, in the first century, it was not unusual for people to extend hospitality to complete strangers who came to the town. Why? Because very often there was no hotel, there was no place you could pay to stay, and the rules of hospitality were very strong, both for the host and the guest. The host was to provide safely for the guest, and the guest was to do no harm, no damage to the host. And Jesus is saying, observe those rules. When you go to a house, you stay there until you leave that town. But he also knew that not every town would accept them. Not every town would welcome them. And what he tells them, if they do not welcome you, leave their town and don't even take the dust of the town with you. Shake it off your feet as a testimony against them. You see, the fact is, no matter how much we rely on the Lord, no matter how much he prepares the way before us, there are going to be people who reject our message, who reject, in fact, him. And when that happens, we're not to dwell on that. We're not to hold on to that. We're not to keep rehearsing, but why wouldn't they do it? What did I do wrong? What could I do better next time? You see, if we were a business, that's the way we would approach it. What should we do different since they didn't buy our product? How should we change things so that they will buy it next time? Or maybe somebody else will buy it. How do we keep that from happening? But you see, we're not relying on our own wisdom. We're not relying on our own planning. We're not re relying on our own foresight. We must rely completely on the Lord. He will open the doors that need to be opened. And the doors that don't need to be opened, he will not open. And if those doors do not open, then we do not take any part of that with us. Not even a memory of what went on. Because that was their doing. It's not our doing. It's not something we need to change. We need to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ wherever we go. And we, we don't do it for reward. We don't do it for recognition. We do it because that's what our Lord has told us to do. And he will provide for us to do that. And the things that don't work, leave them behind. Don't even take the dust of the town on the bottom of your feet. Shake it off. Don't take any memory. Don't take any regret. Don't take any painful thought with you. Leave it behind. And that might be the hard part right there. Finally, the good news goes out. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Now this was, this was unusual. Oh, there were lots of healers in those days, no doubt about it. But you see, usually they would heal for money, for recognition, 
for something. But you see, they didn't do that. All they did was share the good news of Jesus Christ wherever they went. Now, we don't have a record of exactly what they said when they proclaimed the good news, but I would expect it was very similar to what he's going to tell the 72 in chapter 10, where he tells them to tell people that the kingdom of God has come near them. The kingdom of God is there. And to prove it by healing the sick. You see, the work goes with the message. When missionaries go out today, they often spend as much time healing the sick, building uh, schools and facilities to, for the well-being of people, digging wells so that people can have clean water to drink. They often spend as much time doing that as they do preaching the good news verbally. But you see, their actions are also telling people that the kingdom of God has come. What we do preaches as loudly as what we say, maybe even louder. And people will remember both what we have said and what we have done. We need to do the work of God wherever we see it, wherever we can put our hand to it. Now, we most of us cannot go around healing people. Not physically, but maybe we can emotionally and spiritually showing love to people who need it the most showing kindness to people who do not even recognize kindness being gentle with those who have been abused we can show the love of god as surely as we preach the love of god and when we do people will hear people will respond and people will change and the good news goes out we have to remember that it is the good news we are sharing we're not sharing bad news of condemnation we're not telling people what they've done wrong we're not telling people what sinners they are we're not condemning people for their moral failings because you know what most people know what their moral failings are they've already heard condemnation they've already heard criticism They've already heard rejection. They need to hear that God loves them. They need to hear that God's mercy is so great that he will forgive all sins. Even the worst possible sins, God knows, God loves. And if we will accept his mercy, he will forgive. Because you see, that's what good news is. That's what the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the rule of God is. When we turn to him, he redeems us. He restores us. He frees us from our bondage. And that is the very best news. We celebrated here in the U.S. this last week, Independence Day, the 4th of July, when the United States declared independence from Great Britain. But the fact is, we also brought our own forms of bondage and slavery with us. And I'm not talking about just the slaves that had been brought unwillingly from Africa. Although certainly we made that a part of our nation from the beginning. I'm talking about the bondage to sin that we still carried. No declaration of independence can free us. Only God can. And it is the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross for the remission of our sins that gives us freedom, true freedom, when we most need it. And what good news that is indeed. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, forgive us, bless us, free us, and empower us to share your good news with everybody we see. This we pray in your precious and holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you and go in peace.